Hello guys! Today we will talk about data in Laravel and how to pass the data from controller to for example action class based on a tweet by Nuno Maduro which is a follow-up on yesterday's video where I talked about another tweet about action pattern in general. If you haven't seen that video I will link that in the description below. So basically the question is if you have action class or a service class what and how do you pass from controller and how strict should you be with type of that data. So we will talk about DTO and data objects in general and also kind of related to one of my previous videos about strict variable types. So how strict should you be and why. So let's start with Nuno's example what he is doing and I've reproduced that exact scenario. So for example in the store method, let's close that, in the store method you have this. So you have form request and you have an action that actually well performs the action. And the question is what should be the data here and how strict should it be. So create team as an action doesn't know anything about request, about controller, about where it comes from. It may come from web controller, API controller, job, unit test or whatever. It's kind of a black box that accepts the parameters of what data should be stored for creating a team. And in regular typical case it probably is an array but the question is what's inside of that array? Where are the rules of what data is required and what fields and what keys and values and stuff like that? And by default in the team controller we have form request class which should contain those rules for validation. So in our case we have name and description. So here's the visual form and if we try to do something illegal it will be showing the validation errors according to the form request validation. But a bit better approach is to define that array inside of that action class just to inform someone who may open just that action class without knowing what should be inside of that array. So for that reason Nuno's approach is to add a parameter comment in a dog block which also helps not only for information but also helps with static analysis. Let me show that. So in this project I have installed Laristan static analysis tool which helps to analyze your code for potential errors. And you can configure the level and one of the levels is level 6 where it starts checking the array types. So we check our code by running PHP stand analyze and this is what's under the hood. PHP stand is under the hood of Laristan and it will show some errors and one of those errors will be related to our action class. Where is that? Yeah, here it is. So create team action parameter team data with no value type specified in iterable type array. Sounds complicated but basically what it means is that it's not clear what's inside of the array. So the solution to that both from human perspective and from perspective of PHP stand, Laristan is to add a parameter and define that. We have team data parameter and type of that is array and inside of that array we have name string description string exactly as Nuno is showing in his tweet like this and for it to be considered by PHP stand we need to have this syntax so it's even highlighted now. And now if we rerun PHP stand analyze there were six errors as you can see there should be five now exactly. So we fixed the error from static analysis point of view but also we provided additional information for anyone who would actually open that file without any additional context. I also talked about a similar example in the course about Laristan on Laravel Daily. So one of the lessons about missing types talks about that specific error at the end that we need to define not just array but array of what's inside for static analysis to show no errors. So if you want to know more about Laristan and static analysis with examples I will link that course in the description below. So that's one way to define that array that is passed from controller to some external class like action or service. But then in the comments to that tweet a few people pointed out DTO, data transfer objects. Also mentioning a package, very popular package, Spati Laravel data. And Nunu's answer to that is that it's totally valid to use DTO, he just prefers to use array in this particular case. And at the end of this video I will show you why exactly in this case. But now let's see how DTOs would work with Laravel data in this case. So the idea of Laravel data, here's the package documentation and I've installed it behind the scenes. The idea is that you define some class with all the fields and you would pass that class wherever you want. For example from controller to action class 
or maybe elsewhere and that data class will be one point to define all the rules about that data set. To generate that class, I haven't found a specific command, but there's a general make class now in Laravel and we can create something like this make class. Subfolder namespace can be whatever you want, but for example, we may place all the rules for all the team data and whatever data inside of the folder of app data. And if we run that command, we have a separate class created team data, which should extend data from Spati, and then inside you define the structure. For example, like this, I will paste it from my note in the constructor. You define the name and description and also specify the min validation rule for each of them. And keep in mind that question mark means that that field is optional. And now what those validation rules allow us to do is remove that store team request class altogether. So that will be generated automatically. And then in the team controller, instead of that store team request, we may pass team data. For example, let's rename the variable as well team data and then we don't pass request validated as array from that controller but we also pass team data also php storm underlines now that we don't have request user so we just change that to global auth user that is fine and then in the action handle method we need to rename user to authenticatable as an interface and here instead of array team data now we have team data here and we need to remove that and we create that team object with team data to array like this. So to recap, see what happens that team data contains all the rules that we need about that team structure, the fields and the validation rules, which means that we don't need form request class anymore. And we also don't need that PHP stand comment on top because whoever is landing on that class separately can just click here and find out what's inside of that class. What are the fields that should be passed? This is just a simple example and it's not perfectly clear why you would do that, but that's totally beneficial for bigger projects with a lot of different data structures, with a lot of developers on the team. So then you know you have one logic in app data or whatever is your folder to have all the construction for all the data types that are passed between Laravel classes. Globally speaking, that Spati Laravel data is one of the implementations of more global things like value objects and data objects and data transfer objects. And I have a pretty long tutorial on Laravel Daily Com. What is the difference? And when you would need that, this is partially based on a few Laracon talks. One of them is from Kai about seconds and discount and why you would define such object. Then stuff like importing transactions, CSV, export, import, and to not miss any data or to not misinterpret any data or when dealing with third party APIs. So for those scenarios, data transfer objects are very beneficial. But now at the end of the video, let's get back full circle and get back to Nuno Maduro's tweet. And one of the replies by Matt here says that if you are reusing the DTO option would be better. Otherwise, you don't really want to define a class for limited use and basic array shape. And this is exactly what this case is, in my opinion, basic shape from two fields, name and description. So for such cases, DTO or Laravel data or anything like that, in my opinion, it would be kind of an overkill. So in this case, Nuno's approach of just adding a quick comment is quicker. But again, as many things in Laravel and in web development in general, it's a personal preference and depends on your decision, your team, your processes and guidelines. For example, if your team works with DTOs and Laravel data everywhere in all the projects, then it's probably just a part of your process. So yeah, this video kind of discussing one tweet, but with various layers and examples of when you may use what. And may is the main keyword. It's not must, it's not have to, it's your choice. Laravel is just a tool, packages are just tools, but we can of course discuss it all in the description below. What do you use in scenarios like this? Share your experience in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.